What's up, boys and girl? At least according to YouTube analytics, it's probably the Kim Kardashian thing, or maybe it's just my grandma. She still knows how to party. But anyways, did you miss me? Well, don't worry, because I'm back again to read you another bedtime story. Lords of the Fallen finally have a new update, but, but, don't get too excited. There's no new content. But hey, they did make a lot of updates in this patch. And something's better than nothing. But either way, I'm going to bring you all the information you need to know. As always, all of you are very, very much appreciated. But if you can hit that subscribe button, helps me out gratefully. Appreciate you. Now let's get into it. All right, now this is update version 1.1.430. Greetings, lamp bearers, and warm welcome to 2024. We trust you've all enjoyed a very festive season of revelry, not only battling your way through the trials of the three spirits, that is when they're not glitched, assholes, but also making use of a whole stocking's worth of offerings from our radiant Lord Arius, including the much requested storage box, new spells, additional grievous strikes, character appearance reset, and more. We're pleased to confirm the team are now back in full force following the holidays and have already been working hard this week to ensure a meaningful first update. So they did this update in one whole week. Can't be much in here. Bringing with it over 50 enhancements and optimizations to the world of Mornstead. Please find further details below. And as always, let us know your thoughts and comments. In light we walk, Hexworks team. Look, I get it guys. I've been back to work for a month now and I haven't done shit yet either. Let's just make the next one better. All right, first up, we got visuals. Fixed an issue that could cause players to look through the game world on top of the falling Umbral Tower and the Empyrean. Fixed an issue that can cause the environment around Leprosarium to visibly unload from far away. Fixed an issue where wrong materials and tinked combinations were used for the gauntlet of a holy bulwark. Fixed a visual glitch that caused atmospheric effects to be detected from the environment in the Empyrean. Fixed an issue that caused the chest piece of General Angstrom to be colored when coloring the gloves. All right, everybody's favorite collisions. Fixed a collision issue where the player character could clip through certain stones in Leprosarium. Fixed an issue where the throwables and spells could clip through stairs near Leprosarium. Fixed a collision issue that could cause players to get stuck behind umbral assets after being damaged by enemies in the Empyrean. Fixed a collision issue that could cause players to get stuck in environmental assets close to the Hallowed Sentinel Sepulcher in Pilgrim's Perch. Fixed a collision issue that can cause players to get stuck behind a wooden scaffolding near Lower Galrath. Fixed a collision issue that could cause players to get stuck in rocks when jumping down a cliff near Shrine of Adir. Fixed a collision issue with certain rocks that could cause players to get stuck near the vestige of the Bloody Pilgrim. Fixed a collision issue where throwables and spells would not trigger properly when hitting the floor on the top level of the Cathedral in the Empyrean. Fixed a collision issue that could cause players to get stuck behind impaled bodies at the plaza in Lower Calrath. Fixed a collision issue that allowed players to unlock the Shrine of a Deer without having to defeat the Ruiner boss encounter by jumping on rocks near the ladder leading to the Shrine. Fixed a collision issue that allowed players to reach unintended areas and fall out of the game world near Abbey of the Hallowed Sister. Fixed a collision issue that... I think that they just forgot that whole fucking sentence. Fixed a collision issue that... And then they ended it. I don't think they're all back from vacation yet, guys. Fixed a collision issue that could cause players to get stuck inside of assets near an umbral platform and Revelation Depths. Fixed a collision issue where the players could clip through certain stone walls in Bramus Castle. I think their text had a collision issue and hit a wall. Next up, we have multiplayer. Fixed an issue that caused the co-op partner effect collision to remain while the co-op partner was dead. Fixed an issue where a connected client was not able to see the host withered health in specific situations. Fixed an issue where the invaded player's health bar was wrongfully displayed at full before any damage was dealt. Fixed an issue where a co-op partner could fall through the elevator and tower of penance under special circumstances. Fixed an issue where the player's sangrenex amount would be reduced upon returning back to their world after a failed invasion. Fixed an issue that can cause a connected player to get stuck in the loading screen and host made changes to the multiplayer settings while a connection was established. Fixed an issue where the divine arm spells visual effects would look broken for the client. 
fixed an issue that could prevent invaders and hosts to meet due to a locked door and manse of the hollowed brother. All right, animations. Fixed an issue that can cause Pieta to cancel her animation when talking to her during the Sangrenex upgrade. Didn't they? They fixed this six times already. Or does, do people keep breaking it? Like, what's going on here? Fixed an issue that could cause the player character to unexpectedly detach themselves from ladders when the enemy AI attempted to reach higher ground. Fixed an issue where Pieta did not play her Sangrenex upgrade animation and if the upgrade started before Pieta finished her previous dialogue animation. They have so many problems with this. Improve the turn animation of General Engstrom to be more fluent. Audio. Improve Pieta's voiceovers. Improve the sound effect of Tancred, Master of Castigations. Fixed an issue where the sound effects of Spirit of the Bleak Season could be heard without activating all pumpkin stigmas in the arena of the Hush Saint. Improve the voiceovers of the Iron Wayfarer. Improve Damarose's voiceovers. Next up, we have AI. Fixed an issue that could cause the Abiding Defender to lose player focus when traversing to Umbral. Fixed an issue that caused the Holy Bulwark to become unresponsive for a brief period. Fixed an issue that caused the Blood Tornado spell of the Scourge Sister, Delith, to permanently explode when hitting the stairs in the boss arena. Fixed an issue where the body of Mandacious Vestige didn't appear after dying. Next we have bosses. Fixed an issue that caused the Hush Saint not to focus back on the player after defeating a summoned NPC. Fixed an issue that caused the Bringer of Stillness, Bringer of Nulti, and Bringer of Silence to appear with low health in New Game Plus One. Fixed an issue that prevented Umbral Parasites to appear when using the lamp at the Hush Saint's boss encounter. All right, next up, environment. Fixed an issue where the player didn't get damaged by water under certain circumstances. Added a death zone trigger under the wooden bridge in Revelation Deaths to prevent players from skipping a huge part of the area. UI is next. Added visual keyboard support for interacting with multiplayer password UI on Steam Deck. Adjusted the sorting order of runes in the player's inventory. Next up is quest. Fixed an issue where the brazers didn't light the right color and didn't play any sound for co-op partners in depths. Fixed an issue where the brazers didn't light up the right color. Wait, they, they, they literally posted the same thing twice. What the? Who does the QA checks on these things? What the hell? The goddamn patch notes are glitched. All right, finally, we have other. Remove the Christmas decorations on all vestiges. Further optimize characters and enemies by disabling irrelevant actions that were not needed in certain situations. Fixed an issue that caused lock on targeting to have inverted controls on the Y axis. Fixed an issue that could prevent players from soul flaying certain objects and blocking their progression. Fixed the damage output of grand swords when using plunged attacks. Fixed an issue where Lucent Beam would deal damage to players when blocking. Fixed a rare crash that would occur when interacting with certain NPCs. Check out our roadmap here in Light We Walk. And the roadmap is basically the free content roadmap. I don't know why they want us to check it out because everything's done on there. But yeah, guys and girl, that's everything. I mean, I'm not too confident in the work that they put in this week, seeing as how they couldn't even get the patch notes right. Now, I will be working on some remnant videos this week, as well as some other content. I'll get back to Lords of the Fallen when it's worth getting back to it. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me out gratefully, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.